Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Good day to you, my friend, and welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so very, very much for joining us today. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to one of the most precious gospel-telling Bible verses in all of the Word of God. My Bible is sitting open to the book of Titus, chapter 3, and I'm going to read verse 5 here in just a moment. Right now, if you can, reach over, get your own copy of God's Word or that electronic gadget of yours. Join me, Titus 3 and verse 5, and also while you're getting your Bible, get something on which you can jot some notes. If you are ever wondering about how to better tell the gospel, here is a great verse for you, and it happens to be in the flow of our study as we walk through the book of Titus. Along the way, I've got a gospel tract I want to encourage you to get from us as long as well as a sample packet of gospel tracts. I'll be saying something more about that here in just a moment, but let me lead into our Bible study time this way. If you are a parent or grandparent, or if you are an elementary school teacher, you're very familiar with the rule I'm about ready to name. It is the five-second rule. You see, you already know what the rule is. Now, just in case you don't know, the five-second rule says that if a fork or spoon or of a piece of candy or a dinner roll or some other food, if it gets dropped on the floor, it's still okay. You can still eat it and use it as long as you pick it up in five seconds. Now, I know some of you listening right now have just wrinkled up your face. You say that the five-second rule is not healthy. Well, okay, as a dad and as a grandfather, no, I can't defend the rule scientifically, but I sure have used it a number of times. You see, kids drop stuff. They drop things, and real family life has to take in those times when things get dropped, and life's got to go on. The problem is some people think that their sin should be viewed through the same kind of, a, of the lens of a five-second rule. Stay tuned. I'll explain what I'm talking about. Get your Bible and join me. I mentioned a moment ago a gospel tract, and that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. A A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. This is the 80th year that Bible Tracts Incorporated, the parent ministry behind this radio broadcast. For 80 years, we've been publishing gospel tracts in different languages and giving them away all over the world, all of us free of charge. We're able to do this because God's people help us. We have a motto. We've added a little tag phrase to it because of our 80th year, but our motto goes like this, taking the word of God to all the world, 80 years and counting. Well, in my hand right now is one of my favorite tracks of the 41, 42 different tracks that we do. This one has a picture of a swimmer on the front, and the title of the track says, The Best I can. The best I can. How many people think they're going to get to heaven? Because yes, they know they're a sinner, but they're doing the best they can. Well, our Bible verse today will speak to that. But here is a very clear, simple gospel tract. It is used in multiple countries in different languages, and it works. It just flat out works. We were just in Cuba. This one works in Cuba as well. Oh, friend, If you struggle to tell the gospel and tell it clearly, here's a great tool for you to read. It'll strengthen your ability to be giving out a clear, simple gospel message. But friend, read this and then pass it on. At the end of the program, my announcer will give you our contact information. If you give us your name and mailing address, we will send you free of charge a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracts, including this one, The Best I Can. If you can't wait to the very end, just go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. 
All right. If your Bible's open there to the book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 5, simply says this, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his, God's mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now, this verse is one, as I said, of the most famous verses that people use in explaining the gospel to a lost person. And the gem of this verse, the great help of this verse, is that it clearly states that the means or the method of having the sin stain on our heart removed is not at all due to our personal goodness. Now, my outline for verses three through seven thus far has been this. Verse three, I called the depravity that's in me. Now, notice the word beginning with the letter D, depravity. Verse four, I called God's devotion to me. And now, verse 5, my D word is deeds, the deeds done by me. Now, despite my depravity in verse 3, God personally came and appeared on earth to rescue me, to rescue sinners. And friend, you need to receive him as your savior if you have not. The problem with most people is that it's twofold, really. Number one, they won't agree with how sinful they are as stated there in verse three. But number two, the second problem is they won't believe that their own personal good deeds are totally unfit to earn them a place in heaven. Most people believe that God grades on a curve, on a sliding scale method. They think God sees both their good deeds, and yes, they know that he sees their bad deeds, but then God will somehow overlook our bad deeds because of how valuable our good deeds are. But that's faulty thinking. That's not godly thinking. Let me go back to my five-second rule I mentioned at the beginning. If that piece of candy hits the floor, it won't become too contaminated with germs in five seconds, so the candy is still fit to eat. That's what the rule basically says. Well, many people believe that their sinful acts, their sinfulness in some part of their life, yes, they agree that they're a sinner, but they also are good in other parts, or that's their thinking. And here's the problem with that idea. Our good deeds come out of a contaminated life. Our good deeds are fully engulfed with, if I could use the term, sin germs, even before they come out and are done by us. Our good deeds are contaminated by the sin stain on our life. Our good deeds don't start clean. They don't finish clean. They are contaminated. They start polluted. The Old Testament book of Isaiah says this about our very best and most righteous acts. Here's what it says, Isaiah 64, verse 6. We are all as an unclean thing, and all of our righteousnesses, all of our best deeds, are as filthy rags. Now, there's more to the verse, but that gets to the gem I want to get to. By the way, friend, that phrase, filthy rags, was the word that was used in that day to describe a rag or cloth coming off a wound. When soldiers were wounded in battle, they would be bandaged up. Well, those bandages were not changed every day and maybe not changed for a number of days. But when the bandages was taken off, they were called, by this term, translated filthy rags. Oh, beloved, a non-medical person might not see those rags as polluted, but you talk to any doctor, you talk to any nurse, they will tell you those are polluted stuff. Well, God sees our hearts and our most righteous deeds as polluted. Why? They come out of a sin-contaminated life. God is pure holiness. He cannot accept even our best and most righteous deeds. Oh, they're best because of our sense and our perspective. They're righteous because of our perspective. And that's our problem. We see everything from our perspective and we expect God to alter his view and accept our perspective. And that's not going to happen. The main verb in verse 5 is this, he, that is God, saved 
us. He saved us. But in the Bible and in the Greek language of the New Testament here, guess what comes first? Guess what is emphasized first in verse 5? It's these words, not by works of righteousness. The deeds which we so valued and put such stock in before we came to Christ as Savior cannot provide salvation from our sinfulness. They cannot turn God's eyes away from our sin, nor turn God's wrath away from our eternal future in hell. The only thing that can turn God's eyes away from our sinfulness is to have his son's blood applied to our sin account, our sin debt, and to have a washing happen in our soul. That's talked about here in verse 5. Now, why would God even want to do this? There's only one answer. It's provided here in verse 5. God shows us mercy. God shows us pity, pity on our polluted state. Oh, friend, all of our, all of us are sinners from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Our hearts are polluted. All of our best and most righteous actions don't become contaminated. They start contaminated because they come out of sinful hearts. And we tend to, out of pride, do our best deeds to impress God and others. And so they're already contaminated with pride. And that's just the beginning of woes. So, friend, you and I offering a polluted set of good works to God as a way of making him accept you and I is fundamentally an error, fundamentally an error. You and I would not take those filthy rags off of a wound and offer it to a medical doctor and say, here, put this on the wound of another person. That medical doctor, that RN, that whatever their position may be in the medical field, they would look at you in horror. God in his holiness looks at our filthy rags that you and I call righteous deeds. He looks at them as, a, as we offer them to uh, placate him, to cover over our sin. We, he looks at those in horror and says, unacceptable, unacceptable, unacceptable. Friend, as I said, we're all sinners from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Our hearts are polluted. So offering a polluted set of good works to God as a way of making him accept us is fundamentally wrong. The only answer for your sin, the only answer for anybody's sin, is to shed blood of the sinless Savior, Jesus the Christ. So the question is, have you asked him to be your Savior? Have you received him by faith, accepting his payment? is what you desperately need. Have you accepted the fact that you are totally lost in your sin? You cannot save yourself. Your good works are utterly futile to change the situation. You need the mercy, tenderness, and grace of God. If you've never received him right now, do it now. Pray, ask Christ to take your sin away and give you eternal life. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. Again, our phone number is 309 828 6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.